get ready. Based on the popularity of our last video, we've decided to return and look at five more movies that starred roller coasters. We've read through all of your comments and made another list since you seem to enjoy that video so much. Movie buffs and coaster enthusiasts seem to have very large overlapping interests, and if you're like us, you've probably wondered where that coaster in that movie is from. We have some further picks to highlight some real life coasters that are featured in films that you may have ridden yourself. But before we jump in, make sure to check out our previous video first if you haven't already, and then come back and watch this one. And once you're up to speed, why not give the video a like and consider subscribing to our channel as it really helps keep us motivated. Anyway, let's check out some more movies that starred roller coasters. Get ready. Revolution, Six Flags Magic Mountain, Roller Coaster 1977. The aptly titled Roller Coaster from 1977 features a premise that pivots around a terrorist plot to bomb roller coasters. The real star of this movie is Six Flags Magic Mountain's Revolution, now known as The New Revolution. At the time of filming, Revolution would have just opened and was the park's standout attraction. It was advertised as the world's first coaster to feature a vertical loop. This makes for a great plot device as this breakthrough ride feature becomes the target for the terrorist's next attack as a bomb is placed on the loop. This historical film is a must-see for thrill seekers as you get to see lots of historic footage from the early days of not just Magic Mountain but also King's Dominion. This is definitely a worthy entry onto your watch list, particularly considering you can still ride this historic coaster today. Viper, Six Flags Magic Mountain, Encino Man, 1992. As is the case with lots of movies starring roller coasters, Six Flags parks tend to be a common recurring setting for many pivotal scenes. So we turn to another Magic Mountain classic attraction with Viper. This has been used in several media productions, including Tony Scott's True Lies and Clint Eastwood's Space Cowboys but we're going to talk about 1992's Encino Man for its comedic role in the film. In this movie, Dave, played by Sean Astin, uncovers a frozen caveman who is played by Brendan Fraser in his garden. Dave and his friend Stoney, who's played by Polly Shore, go on a series of hijinks when the caveman is eventually thawed out, trying to incorporate him into Southern California life. In one scene, Stoney and the Encino Man take a trip out to Mega Mountain, are as we know at Six Flags Magic Mountain. The big draw for such an excursion would be for the fact that Mega Mountain is now running the Vapor backwards. The Vapor, of course, being the stand-in name for Viper. Dave is unaware of the whereabouts and is left at home worrying for their well-being. When they finally return home, Dave is very annoyed but changes his demeanor when he finds out the reason for the trip. He's more than happy with the explanation now that he hears the Vapor is, and I quote, Riding in reverse. Corkscrew, Vancouver's Playland, Final Destination 3, 2006. We've previously mentioned this one in our video discussing movies set in real life parks before, but it's a classic and it just can't be left out. This is one that, if you've seen it, has probably stuck with you for the rest of your life and has probably contributed to many people's fear of roller coasters. It would be remiss not to include it in one of these videos. Following a premonition, a number of riders set to board Devil's Flight get off just before it leaves the station. The coaster then proceeds to take riders through the course, but the hydraulics that lock the restraints in place malfunction, and just as foreseen in Wendy's premonition, a number of riders die in various ways during the catastrophic event. Every time you get on a coaster, you probably have a sneaking worry about what would happen if the restraints were to release. In Final Destination 3, this fear is fully realized and it's a horrifying scene that is still referenced to this day. Unlike the timeless nature of its starring role, Devil's Flight was actually the now defunct corkscrew found at Playland in Vancouver. CGI helped bolster the ride to give it a more intimidating appearance. The ride closed in 2018 and was known to be terribly rough in its latter years. Actors were reported to have ridden it a total of 26 times in order to get enough footage for the scene. Their dedication paid off though 
as this is definitely one of the franchise's most iconic and infamous starring roles. Big Dipper, Luna Park, Sydney, Our Lips Are Sealed, 2000. The Olsen twins were absolutely unescapable in the late 90s and early 2000s. Based on their target audience, there was always going to be an overlap with an amusement park at some point. This is another example of a movie providing you with a dream scenario similar to that of Richie Rich. While the latter has his own roller coaster in his garden, Maddie and Abby Parker, played by the Olsen twins, get to visit Luna Park in Sydney and have the whole park to themselves. The two girls are on a date with local surfer boys, but the park is closed. This isn't an issue though, as the two boys have their own set of keys to the park, so they can ride all the attractions on their own. The standout ride that they want to experience though is the Big Dipper coaster. The Altson twins were reportedly big coaster fans and relished the opportunity to repeatedly ride the coaster for this scene. The classic Australian coaster operated at Luna Park from 1995 to 2001. It was later sold to Dreamworld, found in Queensland. It reopened in its new park on the 26th of December 2001 and it now operates under the moniker The Gold Coaster. Ghoster Coaster, Canada's Wonderland, The Dead Zone, 1983. David Cronenberg is known to keep his filming locations close to home, so it's no surprise that Canada's Wonderland would show up in one of his films based on its convenient location quite near Toronto. The park would have just opened at the time of filming, considering the grand opening was only in 1981. In the opening of the film, Johnny, played by Christopher Walken, suffers a bad headache while riding a roller coaster. This is actually Ghoster Coaster, which was one of the four coasters at the park on opening day. At the time though, it would have been known as Scooby's Gasping Ghoster Coaster, which is quite fitting for a movie based on a spooky Stephen King book. This junior wooden coaster would probably give you a headache anyway, but this was a specific indicator of the protagonist's oncoming headaches, a side effect of his then unknown psychic powers. It therefore plays an extremely important role in establishing the plot and also the storyline for the rest of the film. If you haven't seen it already, check out our video where we discuss three films that were secretly filmed within Walt Disney World. A link will be on screen now. What are some other movies that star roller coasters? Leave a comment down below and maybe we can make a part three to this series. And now you're ready.